Today's video lecture is on King John and the Magna Carta. We're working on looking at the decline of feudalism. So our essential question for this unit is, how did the events in Europe contribute to the decline of feudalism and the rise of democratic thought? The medieval period during which the power of the English king became more limited was followed by a time when the monarch gained more power once again. The nobles understandably became upset because they had been used to having some control over the monarchy. Their anger was intensified when the actions of King Richard began to cost the people a lot of money in taxes. Richard had used large sums of tax money to participate in the foreign crusade called by the Catholic Church. During his return trip to England, Richard was kidnapped and held for ransom. As a result, the English people were forced to pay more money to free their king. After Richard's eventual death in battle, his younger brother John assumed the throne in 1199. John Lackland was a cruel and unpopular king. King John had inherited no land from his father, and upon ascending the throne, he lacked the funds to defend England's land in France successfully. As a result, he forced all landowners to pay him more money. John also began to buy goods cheaply and turn around and sell them to his subjects at high prices. So his subjects were ordered to assist in the construction of John's palaces and to donate horses and other needed items whenever John requested them. At the same time, John offered fewer services to the people. Finally, John demanded more money in order to go to war with France. John was a weak military leader, earning the nickname Soft Sword, and lost much of England's land in France. By this time, the English nobility was furious with their king, because John had also engaged in a bitter quarrel with Pope Innocent III and tried to take control over some church decisions, he was excommunicated by the Pope. Consequently, church officials in England also became angry with the king and supported the nobles in their opposition to the king's policies. Finally, in 1215, at the meadow of Runnymede, the nobles and church officials confronted John and forced him to sign a contract listing their demands. This contract, called the Magna Carta or the Great Charter, curbed the king's power and became the basis for many democratic propositions in the centuries to come. The Magna Carta contained several rules for the kings. The king was not allowed to imprison free men without a trial by jury. The king had to consult with lords before taxing the land. And the king had to choose competent officials who understood and obeyed the law themselves. And the king could not interfere with or limit the freedom of the church. After King John signed the charter, the conflicts continued until his death the following year. The Magna Carta lived on, and though it did not directly challenge the sovereignty of the king, it was an important step in eventually giving more power to the people and limiting the power of the king. And that word sovereignty means ultimate power or authority of the king. Please pause the video to answer the following questions. Um, then resume because there are two more after this one. So if you were a nobleman, how would you feel about King John? And what would you do if King John did not sign the Magna Carta? Once again, pause the video to answer these questions and then resume when finished. If you were a clergyman, which is a priest, bishop, etc., how do you feel about King John right now? And do you think he should sign the Magna Carta? Explain why. This is the last set of questions, so pause and answer these questions. If you were King John, what do you think will happen if you do not sign the Magna Carta at Runnymede? 